How do you balance freedom of speech with making comments that others find offensive, particularly where race is concerned? Um, and can you tell me anything about hearing youth voices? Um, personally, when I have to make a comment about something that where like someone else has a different belief, I I just keep it simple. I, I make my very own comments and if someone wants to have like a debate on it or argue about it, it's fine, but I don't really get too into detail when um, I have my own opinions about things, depending on what it is. Um, hearing youth voices, I was actually part of hearing youth voices. Uh, I don't know how many years ago, but um, I like hearing youth voices. I like what they're doing, how they're spending um, their group, their organization, and how they're getting out there and getting their word um, heard, and how they're trying to make a change in the new London. Um, I haven't been able to go to any of their meetings, but I hope too soon. I um, I support them a lot, even if it's not shown. But. <laughs> Um, I think it's really important for everybody to have that amendment right to, to speak as freely as they would like to. I do feel like it is harder to speak to someone when they are not really understanding of your, your side of the story and the, the reason you've come to those persuasions. And I think in, in acting that, um, that conversation with somebody else, uh, sometimes it's best to, to know when to step forward and to step back and that's something that we um, we kind of grouped on it in Fresh, and I know that Fresh worked a lot with uh, hearing these voices, so I'm pretty sure that the term that they're familiar with. So yeah, learning when you, you said enough and to step back and let that person uh, give, give their opinion and, and coming to that common ground where, where we're not going to agree, but we're, we're going to understand where each other's coming from. And again, I do, I like hearing these voices because it, it gives the youth the opportunity to speak freely, and if not there, then where? Thanks. Um, first, Hearing Youth Voices is amazing. They're great activists and organizers. I love them, and they are uh, an asset to our community, so uh, they're hugely supportive. Um, and on, on the subject of free speech, it's, in, the, it, it's the First Amendment because it's incredibly important to the rest of our democracy and the rest of our society, and um, it's always been balanced uh, because you can't harass or bully target someone, but the one place that we um, we might want to revisit is uh, the paradox of tolerating the intolerance. Uh, you get into a situation where the intolerant can sort of game the system and uh, affect speech that's dehumanizing, and that is violent. There's a, there's a direct correlation between dehumanizing someone and violence towards them, so I would be very, very careful to focus on that. So I think um, in, inside our school, um, some words just aren't appropriate, to be blunt. Uh, we don't need to swear, we don't need to use racial slurs, it's just flat out wrong. And I don't think it's accepted in society. You're not going to say it in a job interview, you're not going to say it in your schools. We should not say certain words. Um, in regards to hearing these voices, I can just speak from my perspective of hearing them speak at the Board of Education. And then additionally, um, one of their members served on the committee when we picked a new leader, Ben Dover. And I had the opportunity to sit next to him, and you know, I learned his name, learned a little bit about him, and he specifically said, I'm a member of Hearing Youth Voices. And he was such a tremendous asset to the committee. When we got around to finally making the choice of who we were going to make, his words, I think, put us over the top to pick Jose Ortiz, which I believe is going to lead Benny Dover out from what has happened in the past.